YouTube. <laughs> According to my analytics, over 60% of you aren't subscribed. Why? <laughs> Bird tier list. Ah! Oh god. Star Birds are one of the most popular playable classes in the game, with a huge number of successful builds and tons of cool strategies. However, some of these strategies have clearly been more successful than Cute. others. So today we'll be going over the bird tier list to see which bird ranks highest. But before we get into looking at specific bird builds, let's do an overview of the basic attributes and special abilities the bird faction has access to, as well as a quick rundown of the oh. history of the bird faction. So birds are one of the newer factions in the game, I love joining this. the game's roster during the latter part of the Mesozoic animations. expansion. They began as an offshoot of the dinosaur faction that was specifically adapted to arboreal gameplay, but when so the devs cool. dropped the Cenozoic Balance patch, these small avians were the only dinosaurs not to be hit by the banhammer. Fast forward to today's meta and birds are one of the most successful factions in the game, owing this success to a handful of powerful unique abilities, in addition to the obvious flying attribute. First of which is their beak. Now, beaks were not an entirely new ability so cool. for the reptile player base, but birds went far deeper into the beak skill tree than most dinosaurs ever had, with many bird players opting for extremely specialized beaks to give them an edge in specific scenarios. However, even the basic beak offers plenty of advantages. While their lack of teeth does mean that they deal reduced damage with That's their bite attack, birds can be far more accurate with their pecking attacks, enabling them to hit weak points or secure grabs on smaller targets, such as the thin hurt box of a snake. Beaks also offer moderate protection, potentially reducing headshot damage and oh, nullifying yeah. imprecise counterattacks. Beaks also offer some of the best stab type damage in the game, which when used accurately can deal massive damage on crit. Beaks are also excellent tools for dealing with parasites. In fact, they're so good that oftentimes other less dexterous players will party oh. up with bird support players in order to have a better matchup against parasites. Feathers are also a unique and powerful trait Raven. exclusive to birds that provides excellent cold protection without causing the user to become too over-encumbered to fly. Feathers also offer pretty substantial defense against crush you type can tell attacks, by the shape. which is especially important to birds because of their hollow bones trait. Hollow bones are another ability meant to synergize so cool. with the flying playstyle. Now, a common misconception is that bird bones are hollow in order to reduce equipment load, but actually they're hollow in order to let bird players fill them with air which grants them a massive boost to their maximum stamina. Without this, it'd be extremely tough for a bird to fly for any significant period of time. Kingfisher. The trade-off, of course, is that a broken bone not only deals serious damage, but also oh. potentially reduces the player's maximum stamina by a huge margin. Oh, so a bird player will need all of the blunt damage defense it can get. And speaking of blunt damage, the bird's lower bone density means the bird's own blunt force strikes, like wing attacks, also deal reduced damage. The top tier bird builds are the ones that can best capitalize on the strengths of their class while mitigating potential weaknesses. That about covers the basics, so let's get into the tier list. Okay. At the bottom of the Ground tier birds. list, we have two flightless bird builds, both with essentially the same glaring weakness. These kakapo. are the kiwi and kakapo. Kiwis are hilariously part of the same faction as ostriches, emus, and cassowaries. For some reason, they often give up the flight rapids. ability but didn't use the extra available skill points to spec into gigantism like the rest of their squad did. The result is a build that can literally only exist on island servers where there is no active mammal player base, <laughs> aka New Zealand. The Kakapo is a flightless version of the parrot, and although parrots are undoubtedly excellent bird builds, the flightless weakness is too glaring to ignore. Due to invasive species like rats and cats establishing a presence on island servers, both of these flightless bird builds are seeing major declines in their player base, and I would not be surprised if they all ended up switching mains. Flight is just too strong an ability to pass up. Which brings me to the next builds on my tier list. Yay! So I see what these builds were going for. Being giant could potentially make up Stop for the lack me. of flight, but in practice this didn't quite pan out. While these are technically the strongest birds in terms of base power and defensive stats, for their weight class, they are woefully underpowered. What? They're one of the few megafauna builds that can be taken down by cheetahs, when they should be able to completely annihilate cheetahs with their powerful claws. 
Their huge weak point presents a lot of opportunity for counterattack too, so if they ever get too bold, they're setting themselves up for a tough loss. Lastly, Oof. the fact that they are forced to nest on the ground forces them into an even more vulnerable position than most birds, as ratite eggs are extremely valuable as loot. Objective defense is not an easy task even for high tier builds, so for <laughs> ostriches, emus, and cassowaries, this is a huge hurdle. Next on the tier list we have the Hummingbird. This build specced purely into mobility and just about nothing else, and as a result is the only bird build with full 360 degree movement, similar to a dragonfly. This, combined with its extremely small size, enables the Hummingbird to very quickly change direction mid-flight, allowing it to easily dodge attacks and fly around obstacles. More importantly, it allows the Hummingbird to access nectar, which is an extremely valuable source of energy that's normally inaccessible to birds, since birds are usually too heavy to land on flowers Yay! and not agile enough to access nectar mid-flight. This all sounds great, but the Hummingbird also has two very serious weaknesses. The first is pretty obvious. They have no combat prowess at all, and any attack they fail to dodge will send them right back to the character no, select no, no. screen. But in addition to that, the insane energy cost of their flight ability, combined with their total lack of fat storage, means hummingbirds will run out of stamina very quickly if they can't constantly find food. To me, this is a high risk, high reward strategy where the risk far outweighs the reward, so I have to place them in F tier. Damn. Pigeon! At the bottom of D tier, we have the pigeon. The pigeon build doesn't really have any critical flaws, but they're held back by mediocre stats. In particular, the Pigeon is sorely lacking in any combat-focused stat, like power or defense. Ow. They do best in cities where their excellent navigation ability grants them an extra bit of safety by nesting among high-rises in loot-rich locations. Uh. But even in cities, Pigeon players tend to be the Peregrine. main source of XP for higher-tier predators. It's a falconer's bird. Plus, if you're just looking to play a bird build that's good at looting cities, there are better options available anyway. The Peacock build is another generally understated build with high HP but little else to rely on. It does however have one of the highest intimidation proficiency bonuses in the game, gaining a massive buff to all intimidation checks when its eye spot feather ability is activated. As impressive as this ability is, the Peacock's actual attacks do very little damage, so any player able to resist being frightened will have a pretty easy win. The peacock's diamatic display also blocks vision behind itself, oh no. making a stealth approach by a third-party attacker extremely easy. And while they can escape by flying, the feathers of a peacock are so heavy that getting airborne takes a bit longer than most birds, which can be the difference between dodging or dying when under attack. The flamingo is a bit of an AFK class. Very minimal skill is actually required to pilot this build. They opted to spec into the filter feeding ability meaning all they really need to do to gain experience and progress their character is pick a random spot in the lake bed and start digging around with their beak, Yay! scoring free wins against things like snails and shrimp. However, when faced with a challenge from any player anywhere near its size, this build totally falls apart. They rely on water to impede the approach of predators in order to give them time to escape when attacked. However, this doesn't always work. Their pathetic defensive stats mean they go down in one or two hits, and their slow flight startup means that oftentimes players will have time to rush them down even when they're in the water. Oh my god. This is an easy build to rack up a bunch of experience with, Kill it, but faster. also a very easy build to defeat Just if you know their weaknesses. Oh, thing. Nature is tough. Ah, the humble chicken. Often compared to the T-Rex to exemplify how far the dinosaur faction has fallen. While I disagree with the implication, Nugget. I don't disagree that chickens are indeed a low-tier build. While they aren't anywhere near as totally helpless as the kiwi or kakapo, they're still a barely average statted bird that lacks the ability to fly for any extended distance. They can certainly hold their own against most similarly sized opponents, but with poor escape options and no unique abilities, this build faces an uphill battle against most opponents. Well, okay, I shouldn't say no unique abilities. But to be honest, their fast respawn rate kind of backfired on them due to humans using the factory farming strategy. Next in C tier, we have the Vulture C tier? Build, the tankiest variant of the Raptor subclass. Excuse me! A good tank build needs to be able to accomplish two things. Wrong. The first is area denial, which Vultures do quite well. A few of them can easily lock down a carcass, one of the most contested points of interest you'll ever see on the map. They can do this because of their large size and acidic projectile attack. The other thing a tank must be good at is shrugging off hits, and this is where vultures fall short. Their thick feathers easily shield them completely from smaller attacks, 
but because of their hollow bones, blunt fours can easily crush their defenses and take them down in only a hit or two. So while they can defend a carcass from hordes of smaller scavengers, they don't have much counterplay towards bigger, more aggressive brawlers. The command post is now under hostile control. The woodpecker build spent the bulk of their evolution points optimizing and perfecting the peck attack, both in power and efficiency, with one goal in mind to be able to hit insect players through cover. Burrowing is one of the safest, most effective ways insect players can avoid combat. Grubby. But the woodpecker absolutely demolishes this strategy. One of the main advantages of this strategy is that having a powerful beak that's highly effective at drilling through wood also just means you've got a super sharp beak that's highly effective as a general purpose weapon. One of the main disadvantages of this strategy is that pecking at wood gives the woodpecker's location away alerting more powerful predators to its presence while it's in the middle of pecking and is distracted. One particular woodpecker build, the Toucan, opted to spec into more bulk and an even more powerful beak, which, while less useful for attacking insects through the wood, is still extremely powerful for PvP. All in all, interesting strategy. By no means flawless, but definitely has some solid strengths. So, I know I've been pretty hard on flightless birds up until now. <laughs> so you might be surprised to see me rate penguins as upper mid-tier rather than low tier. The difference is, penguins actually swapped out their wings for an arguably equally viable alternative, flippers, which essentially there. allow them to fly through the water with incredible agility. This gives them a downright broken a matchup like against that. fish. Fuck. However, this strategy is pretty much only viable on servers where there are no land-based predators that penguins would still need to worry about. So if for whatever reason a few polar bears ever spawn in the Antarctic server, it's kind of game over for that entire build. The predators they have to contend with in the water are even more dangerous, and while their agility does help them dodge attacks, ultimately it's still a totally one-sided matchup. Their strategy is pretty cool and actually fairly dominant due to limited competition, but I wouldn't be surprised terrifying. to see the entire that? Penguin player base collapse if the devs ever add new Happy DLC me. in the form of an Antarctic land predator or even if they just buff the land mobility of the leopard seal. They made that seal Still, look so Still, top scary, of C tier man. is a respectable position for a flightless bird. At the bottom of B tier, we have the goose. I've got an entire video dedicated- Canadian goose in B tier and vultures in C tier? Is it because they're invasive? The what? Like, what? But in short, the goose has solid base stats, including above average hit points. I'm gonna make a response video. <laughs> However, its abysmal power stat leads it to rely heavily on intimidation to secure territory. This can be unbelievably effective at times, and it's not uncommon to see top tier predators flee an encounter that they easily could have won. Still, the obvious flaw in this strategy the is that if the goose's opponent resists being frightened, the goose will be wide open to a punishing counterattack. In addition, the goose's weak spot is easily exploitable by intelligent players, so careless aggression tends to be the goose's biggest strength and biggest weakness at the same time. All in all, still a surprisingly effective strategy. The Heron build put a huge amount of evolution points into maxing out the puncture damage it can deal with its beak, and it did so to great success. Herons have one of the highest damage pecks of any bird, and frequently one-hit their targets, even those with scale armor like large fish and juvenile crocodiles. The effectiveness of their piercing attack is amplified by their long neck, which gives their attacks a deceptively long range, giving their strikes an almost cobra-like flash to them. They have downright oppressive matchups against fish, amphibians, Froggy. and all other small aquatic builds. Sad. One vulnerability they do have is that their flight ability has a lot of startup, making it a bit less reliable as an escape option if they do happen to get ambushed. Still, oh, it's certainly not terrible. Another weakness is that their long neck presents a bit of a weak point, making lunging forward with repeated pecking attacks a bit risky if you get too predictable about it. Good players bird. will be able to punish Bad careless idea. lunges quite hard. In high B tier, we have the Falcon, there. a raptor build that opts to defeat its opponents using speed and superior maneuvering rather than actual power. Falcons actually have a below average power stat for a raptor, and don't deal particularly high damage in close combat. Their talons are pretty small compared to hawks, owls, and eagles, and so instead of slashing and stabbing with their claws, falcons actually punch with their feet to disorient or concuss their target, and then finish the fight with their more powerful beak. I would also just like to mention that this is also a falcon. But... 
in the right situation, this can deal absolutely massive damage, enough to one-shot a mid-sized target at full HP. The drawback of this strategy is that Falcons can only dish out high damage when they have the time to build up speed first. This makes the Falcon a pretty poor defender for objective game modes, and means the Falcon Damn. can struggle to win fights if its first attack doesn't so ballsy connect, coopers. as follow-up attacks will likely not have the same force built up as the first. Still, the burst damage potential of this build cannot be ignored, so it earns its spot in high B tier. This might seem Sir. like an odd inclusion to cap off B tier, but Songbirds are a highly efficient build for their size and do deserve recognition on this tier list. This what do you is mean a huge group, including finches, starlings, sparrows, wrens, and birds of paradise. And while some are flashier than others, they all have relatively similar stats, with extremely high agility being their core stat. Unlike many of the builds lower on the tier list that have difficulty getting themselves airborne quickly, Songbirds have extremely low startup on their flight move, allowing them to reposition themselves easily and quickly. This makes their approach very difficult to punish, making Songbirds excellent at chipping away at defensive players, and makes them great at stealing loot from slower builds. Yoink. Their safety in numbers strategy can actually be somewhat intimidating and disorienting too, making it rather difficult to attack a party of Songbirds mid-flight. While they certainly aren't invincible, having one of the lower HP stats among birds, Damn. they're an often overlooked but undoubtedly successful bird build. At the bottom of A tier we have the Swan. A -tier? The Swan is essentially a goose that has the power stat to actually back up its attempts to intimidate. The wing attacks that most bird players use do very little damage and aren't very useful aside from pushing other players around. I'm still pissed the about the Swan's wing attack thing. can break bones and concuss foes. Because of this, Swans are one of the best builds at controlling important points of interest, as their hyper-aggressive playstyle can result in huge territory gains. Of course, they do have the same weaknesses as Geese, so targeting the Swan's neck with an attack can defuse the threat. But this is a bit riskier of a play against a Swan than against a Goose. All around, sturdy defender, definitely A tier. Vultures are endangered. If it was about numbers, chickens should be at Next the fucking Next in A tier we have the top. Owl, the avian faction's premier stealth assassin build. It owes this reputation to its special fault. ability, which allows it to fly completely silently. This makes the Owl's strikes very difficult to defend against, as players just about never see them coming. While not as stacked in the power department as their daytime counterparts, Owls do have quite solid base stats. While they aren't likely to one-shot high HP targets, Owls they do have enough Falcons force behind so their wrong. attacks to be able I'm to so defend bad. themselves and their territory, even from powerful enemies. In addition to granting the Owl the silent flight perk, the Owl's thick, bushy feathers offer additional defense against attacks, enabling it to stand its ground in important objective defense scenarios. Interestingly, the silent flight perk did come at the cost of the waterproof ability that most bird feathers have, meaning that falling into the water or getting caught in a rainstorm can actually disable the owl's flight ability. A pretty unique weakness, and certainly something owls that can be played around, owls are but just interesting sitting way nonetheless. Predators. They just chill and wait for something to come along. In the middle of A tier, we have the Eagles and Hawks. Hawks and Eagles follow the same basic strategy, both having tailored They're their not. builds to focus on dealing maximum damage with their talents. Hawks are the smaller variants of this group, and because of this, they are far more agile. Red tail. While not as powerful as eagles, their agility enables oh, them to weave cool. through cover better that than most cool birds That was a cool clip. I've never seen that. This makes them well suited for rushing down players, both in open terrain and in dense, difficult to navigate terrain like forests. Eagles, in contrast, are much more powerful, but their larger size and wider wingspan prevents them from entering dense forests. Still, in open prairies and mountains, eagles can be incredibly effective dealing absolutely brutal damage with their enormous dagger-like talons. Enough to take down players in higher weight classes without even requiring team strategies. These are without a doubt some of the strongest bird builds in the game for PvP, and have been for quite some time. I don't know what he's putting at the top. At the top of A tier we have the grappler tank hybrid, the Pelican. The Pelican's main strength is its throat pouch. Grappling enemy players can be a highly effective takedown strategy, but birds struggle with this since they can't use their wings to grab, and since their beaks aren't always the most reliable grappling weapons. Sometimes if he puts a raven or a crow up top, I'll be fine The with pelican's that. grapple is, in contrast, almost totally inescapable, and works on targets much larger than you might think. Respect. While this attack style is most effective against fish, it's quite powerful against other bird, rodent, this and guy, amphibian players, although it does have its limitations. This, combined with the pelican's overall bulk, makes it one of the most difficult birds to take down in single combat, 
and enables it to stand its ground against even top tiers like canines. So those of you who follow the channel surprised. for a while can probably guess what the top tier birds tier. are going to be. But Mallard ducks if you can can't, swim. that's probably a good indication that you should be subscribed. This one's fair. Those of you wishing the devs could unban the Velociraptor build look no further than the Secretary bird, as it has basically all the same awesome abilities and more. Hunting on foot and in pairs, they prove time and time again that striking from the sky is overrated. They can easily defeat other high tier builds such as the <laughs> Cobra and Mongoose with their high damage kicks. Their stomp move has extremely high accuracy, Stompy. allowing Secretary Bird players to score game ending headshots with ease. And they do all this without completely sacrificing their flight ability. If they ever find themselves outmatched, which only ever happens against builds in higher weight classes, they can still retreat to the sky or treetops. The fact that this strategy works in Africa, one of the most unforgiving servers of all time, is proof enough to me that this is the optimal raptor. These last two builds are about equally matched, both opting for the same specialization, intelligence. Parrots are an extremely okay. unique build with several powerful abilities. The next Not one's the gonna be a Corvid. their sonic shriek, which can drive away just about any player who invaded their territory, especially when employed by a coordinated team. In addition, due to their prehensile beak, parrots have the highest dexterity of any bird, putting them among the best users of the tool use ability. And with an extremely high lifespan, if there was any build that could replace humans if humans ever get their intelligence nerfed, I'd bet on the parrot. I made an entire video on parrots if you're interested, but when it comes to intelligence, there's one avian build that arguably outclasses them. Corvids, such as magpies, crows, and ravens, also opt for a high intelligence playstyle, but with a far more expansive social aspect to it. While plenty of bird builds use cooperative team strats, the best corvids operate using a network effect, where knowledge is shared with a huge amount of players over vast distances. This knowledge can include useful points of interest, or even blacklists of dangerous areas or players to avoid. But even individually, corvids have a lot going for them. With significantly higher stealth than parrots, corvids are much better at staying out of conflict. Their pointy beaks, while not as useful for tool use, are a much better combat tool for dealing quick damage. It's also more useful for pressuring and poking opponents, or for provoking larger players into battle, so that they can reap the benefits of the aftermath. Corvids are one of the best builds at making use of human-made items, and quickly figure out ways of abusing the system to score quick loot. All in all, Corvids are basically what you'd get if you gave that. monkeys wings. Easily a top tier build. So there you have it, the complete bird tier list. Or rather, as complete as I thought possible for YouTube. If I didn't do a segment on your favorite bird, please let me know in the comments. Despite being the longest video I've ever made, there were still a few birds that I cut from the video for time's sake, or because I felt I couldn't discuss the bird properly without getting into territory that was potentially too violent for YouTube. If you're interested in watching the full director's cut version of this video, it's available to watch on wow. Nebula, a subscription streaming service built by and for oh. creators. <laughs> what a plug. Nebula comes bundled for free with Curiosity Stream, another awesome streaming this service and longtime sponsor of the channel. Not, maybe Curiosity not Stream is home you. to the highest quality nonfiction content around, if with several may. thousand documentaries available for streaming on all. He did vultures wrong. I'm just gonna say the things that I disagree with most are vultures being so low and then hawks and owls. I think they should be swapped. Hawks or er, no, sorry, um, falcons and owls. Falcons, owls may have a stronger grip strength in terms of PSI, but owls are not nearly as strong of hunters as falcons are. Um, thank you for the 11 months. And vultures are badass and they do not get enough credit. It actually triggers me. Nintendo was shot by Skeleton.